In the last video, we discussed ways of synchronizing multiple communication instructions using the Click PLC. Here we have a receive instruction and a send instruction, very similar to what we saw in the last PLC example. And the last PLC example, we had a very crude way of synchronizing these. We used a rising edge contact to enable one and a falling edge contact to enable the other. And the rising and falling came off the same clock pulse bit. In that case, it was special contact number five, 100 millisecond clock. In this case, we wanted to do a more sophisticated approach, so we ended up using some of the status bits available in the send and receive instructions. In this case, the success bit, which comes on every time the instruction has completed its task. So when the send instruction does its job of sending data, when it's through with that, it uh, sets the uh, success bit to a one condition. Likewise with the receive instruction. When it's done receiving the data, it's all concluded with its task, it sets its success bit right there. We're going to use the status, the one and zero status of these success bits, to tell us when to go on to the next instruction. So the way we do that is we actually use a drum. In Alan Bradley world, this would be a sequencer. This, in this case, with the click, it's a drum. And what we're doing here is we're have a two-step drum. There's two steps to it. In step number one, we activate C3. And what that does, I'm sorry, the step number one, we activate C1. That's a rising edge contact that momentarily enables a receive instruction. When the receive instruction is through doing its job, it lights up its success bit, C3. C3 is now the event in the drum that tells us to go to step two. And in step two, we activate or we set bit C2, which then comes over here as a rising edge contact, enabling the next uh, communication instruction, the send. And when the send is done with its job, it lights up its own success bit, C4, which is the event for the next step. We'll say, okay, done here. Now the drum is complete. We'll get a uh, one bit on the complete right over here. That one bit resets the drum, telling it to go back to step number one, where the entire cycle resumes from the start. So we have receive. As soon as we get a success there, it tells the drum to go to the next step. We get a bit momentary here that tells us to send. Whenever that's done, it tells us to go to uh, the last step of the drum to be done. It rolls around and does step one again. The beauty of this approach is that we're not limited just to two instructions like we were in the other approach where we use special contact number five, rising and falling. Here we can have multiple steps in the drum, five, six, seven, ten, and as many steps as we want, really. And for each one of those steps, the enabling event to tell it to go to the next step will be the success bit of the instruction that's just executed. That way when it's done with one instruction, we get a success bit, goes on to the next step, so on and so forth until we get to the very last step of the drum, the drum resets itself and starts back where it began. So this is a technique that we could use with a multitude of send and receive instructions with communications without any real uh, difficulty. The other technique I showed you, using a special contact number five, rising and falling, that definitely has limitations. We can really only use that on two instructions at a time.